Hey guys, my name is Val, and this is my 2012 Lexus ISF. I don't usually do this kind of video, but I figured I'd answer some questions and uh, trying to show you what kind of mods I have and all that. So, hope you enjoy. Let me know. Thanks. So this is the 2012 Lexus ISF. It's my second one. I used to have a 2008, and from 08 to 2014, they made about 5,100 of them. So fairly a rare car. Um, on my 08, I just had a cap back, a tune, um, some coilovers, you know, some cheap summer tires, and it was great fun. I had it for about three years, 70,000 miles, bulletproof car, just a fantastic car. And I liked it so much, you know, I wanted to upgrade, and I test drove a lot of cars, and I figured just a newer ISF was the one for me. So, that being said, just wanted to go into detail about this car a little bit. It is a, don't mind that, my window's down. My dog is inside. It's a 2012. So 2010, they upgraded the LSD. 2011, they updated the suspension a little bit. Uh, some handling, updated headlights, instrument cluster, a couple other things. But uh, overall, powertrain is pretty much the same. So, but the LSD helps a lot. And then I've got PPE catless headers. I've also got a X-Force Varix dual mode catback exhaust. So with headers, sometimes you get a little bit of drone or it's too loud or it's too quiet. So I gotta say I had about nine different exhaust setups so far, in various combinations with Borla, with and without headers and such. And uh, I feel I finally got it right. So. It's uh, dual mode, so I can be as loud or as quiet as I want. Um, to add to that, I've got a RR tune, so RR racing tune. And then I've got an intake elbow, just a little bit of engine bling. Maybe good for a few horsepower on a nice day, but uh, that's what the engine bay looks like. Spaghetti motor underneath, but uh, there you go. I used to have a RR Racing tuned intake. Uh, the car came with it because it came with headers and exhaust and um, had a Borla originally. But the tuned intake, for some reason, I had some issues. I'm not sure. I could never quite narrow it down. But uh, anyway, I did without it and it works just fine. Uh, to add to it, I have HKS coilovers. So I should have started from started the video. Um, with the notion of saying I always mod my cars to be sort of OEM plus as in I don't want to grab too much attention but I do want to have it modded you know up upgrade the handling a little bit the power the sound the look but I don't want to have every cop and you know angry Karen looking at me so um, just a few minor modifications as such uh, so power, again, PPE catalyst headers, cap back, tune, intake. For aesthetics, we've got some raised gram light wheels. And these are 19 by 9.5 plus 45 square. So it's front and rear the same size. And they are an HS gun metallic. So you can kind of see some of the flake inside. So great looking wheel, and they were wider, but also lighter than the stock forged BBS wheels. So even though they're cast, great upgrade in my opinion. Tires, we've got Michelin Pilot Sport 4S and Super Sports in the rear. The reason being, I have 255-35 tires up front, 285-30 in the rear. But unfortunately, the P4S don't make them, don't come in that size rear. So you do what you do. Anyway, um, calipers, or the calipers are OEM, but painted sort of a candy red. And then, as you can see, two-piece rotors in the back. Not sure what pads as it came with it, but in the front, I changed the rotors to Brakenetic with Project Mew Type PS pads. And they are fantastic. I can't say enough good things about them. They're a street pad, but they have quite a good bit of bite. 
and also not really any dust. I mean, uh, I can go a week or two of driving and, you know, obviously the wheels help, but they really don't dust anywhere near as much as OEM Brembo. So, can't say enough good things about it. Um, let's see, aesthetics, HKS coilovers, like I said. I did have BC Racing before uh, on my 2008, and the BC Racing I had with Swift Springs with 14 10 rates and 16 12, right? Um, so, three overall sets. If you've ever driven a 2008 to 2010, you know the car came stiff. They had it a bit more of a track oriented set setup. So a uh, little bit firm, not terribly so, but if you're daily driving, especially a lot of uh, railroad potholes, whatever, definitely, uh, definitely a little stiff. So any coilover you go is gonna be honestly improvement in ride. Now, as far as handling, HKS for sure is better. And I'm sure there's definitely better options, Penske, um, Olins, etc. So, but HKS pretty good for the price, no complaints. In the front, I've got the OEM headlights. And surprisingly, these are tough to find. They've got the headlight, the uh, eyelashes here. that come on all 12 and up. And they have Osram CBB Cool Blue Boost uh, low beams. So it says 7K, but uh, it's really more of a 6,000. And on the bottom, I've got Winjet LED fog lights sort of to match so looks pretty darn good if i say so myself so funny enough on my 2008 i didn't like the oem headlights so i had them custom built and upgraded i had a f logo made and all kinds of fancy stuff but i gotta say even looking back the oem these ones are the best you know best projector best light just no complaints. Other aesthetics, um, or excuse me, handling, to go with the coilovers, I've got front FIGS 90 LCA bushings. Those are lower control arm bushings. And um, yeah, they do the job. There's another option, which is the R Racing USRS. But again, my goal is sort of a daily driver. USRS, I... I'm not sure, but I've heard of a couple complaints about a little bit of NVH. I'm not a fan of NVH, which is noise, vibration, harshness. But uh, I have the FIGS 90, zero issues. You know, you really can't go wrong with either. I have lots of my F buddies that have the R Racing version and they're plenty happy, so. Um, on the rear, I've got a F Sport sway bar. And I gotta say, you know, the wheels aren't super aggressive. Again, they're 19 by 9.5 plus 45 square. But this is my third wheel set on the ISF. And although I may not win any car shows, I have zero rubbing issues. Like none, no potholes, no dips, nothing will sway it. Rides amazing, very comfortable. So fantastic really. Other than that, as far as aesthetics, we got a full carbon fiber rear spats side skirts right and then uh lexon front lip again i love this thing i had a couple ebay lips before this thing is real carbon fiber as you can see lexon right there and it fits nice it fits flush and the best part is in the front right there it doesn't connect to the body as in there's little slats that you can see through. You may not be able to see through. The reason I bring that up is a lot of lips tend to fly off at high speed or tear off, whatever. And I can say no issues at all with this one here. So, and then to finish it up, we got a little bit of carbon fiber wrap here on the grill, vinyl wrap, right? Gloss black roof, a little bit more carbon fiber vinyl on the trunk here on the emblem custom plate and then vlan tails on the back now i had spec details before the rear taillights 
and VLAN, I think they're pluses and minuses to both, but I think VLANs are a little bit more modern look. The diffuser is a Tom's replica, also carbon fiber. It's in a bit rougher shape, as you can see, but it came with the car, can't really complain. Pretty much uh, the only thing visual that came on the car. Let's see what else. And the white stripes are just vinyl stickers. You know, every car needs a little bit of rice and maybe mine is a little more ricey, but is what it is. So the best thing about this car, many great things, but it's the red guts, the red interior. And I don't know about yours, mine comes with a pupper. Hey Finn, he's just a good old boy. Sorry, it's a little dirty, but red interior for the win. So, as I mentioned, we've got the uh, dual mode exhaust and right now the valves are closed, All right? So that's with closed valves. Quiet, open it up. You can instantly hear it. Not gonna rev it too much. I got a lot of people around me, but you get the idea. So, nav, heated seats, front and rear parking sensors. Not sure what else you need. Just that and the V8. What else? Um, so yeah, tires, suspension we've gone over, power. Ah, I was saying my favorite thing. So, you know, when this car came out, obviously the E92, the C63, they got a ton of attention. This thing was kind of kind of skunk works kind of thing kind of uh and uh, i don't know what you call it words escape me right now but it wasn't didn't get as much attention as it should have so it struggled coming out you know no lsd it's handling all over the place brakes etc but come 2011 they really straightened it out and it has to be i gotta say my favorite f car as i mentioned i had a uh 2008 and you know, I test drove an RCF and GSF, and obviously those are a little bit pri higher priced, but uh, I really feel the 2011 and up ISF got it right. You know, it's about 3,800 pounds, low sales numbers, low production numbers, you know, and you can count that on, you know, blame it on what you want, the economy or whatever at the time. But uh, it kind of sucks because 2011 and up is what you really want. And of the 5,100 total made, there's less than 2,500 11 and up. I mean, in 2014, they only made like 86 of them. So fairly rare. I mean, prime competitor, the Chevy SS. Fantastic car, maybe a little boring looking. Not to say this one isn't. But people complained it didn't sell. Well, uh, I believe they sold like... 13,000 of them just in the US of the Chevy SS and this is less than half of that so that's really kind of the best thing in my opinion about the cars because not many know who, what it is even Lexus salespeople don't know you know um, everybody thinks it's a IS 250 350 but a 5 liter V8 420 horsepower about 350, 360 to the crank stock. You know, modded out, just headers, cat back. Even without the tune, you're at 400 to the wheel. Add the tune, maybe 410, 420. And uh, add the tuned intake and a little bit E85, E mix, E30, whatever you want to call it. And that thing boogies. I think uh, the max I've seen is about 435 to the wheel. So, yeah, I mean, not bad at all, you know, for a car made in, sold originally in 2007. 420, 430 to the wheel, that's about 500 crank, more than enough to keep up with today, you know. Funny enough, the guy who had this car before me, he had a 2008 with the exact same mods, and he had, uh, to the strip up in Massachusetts, he did was it 11.7 on slicks and 11.9 
on a street tire. So I was hoping to match that, but my local track closed. But, you know, no excuses. I got to make it out before the summer or the season ends. So anyway, like I said, sorry for rambling. Uh, I just wanted to show the car. It really, you know, doesn't look like anything special, but a lot under the hood. And, uh, you know, fantastic daily driver for what it is. I drive it, my 08, I had, uh, what, three years, about 70,000 miles. And the only issue I had was valley plate leak. Unfortunately, a common problem, but for me, it was fixed by the dealership, even though it was under out of warranty um, other than that you know I average 20 21 and on the highway I can crank it up to 29 30 well not 30 28 29 to the gallon if I really baby it I think he's ready to go so um, yeah I just wanted to go a little bit into detail sorry if it's a little repetitive like I said don't really do this so let me know if you have any questions and uh, yeah, be safe. Thanks again, guys.